Hello one and all, I am Pal of Games and welcome to my first episode of Half Hour. It's Half Stone guys, get with it. So the whole point is, it's a concept I came up with, I thought let's widen the range in terms of card games. I've got a beta key for this, so I thought why not, you know, show you something a bit different. I feel this game's a lot like Magic the Gathering meets you in a sort of in-between without shenanigans of traps. Now I find it a really cool game and I wanted to share it with you guys and if you like I'm probably going to do more of it. So let's show off the classes. So we've got nine classes. Uh, some of you guys might have known about this game and you've probably seen it from other places but sure I'm going to do it for people who might not have. Mage, they have a hero power which is deal one damage. It's pretty simple straight off. It's I will obviously show off gameplay in a minute to uh, give you an idea. Uh, Warlock is draw a card and take two damage. Hero powers are basically why you would pick a character. Basically, it's the thing what makes them different. Each card comes with its own like special set of cards, as well as obviously its own power. It's kind of a clever way of doing archetypes. Really, I really like it. Moving on, we have a hunter whose ability is deal two damage to enemy hero. Now, the way this game works is that. It's direct damage to win, basically. It works basically how Yu-Gi-Oh! works, or how Magic works. Basically, every card game works like this. So, uh, that gives you the idea. Uh, Paladin is a uh, summoner 1-1 one, one Silver Ham Recruit. Obviously, it's like a token-y thing, you know, for those of you who play Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic, you get the same idea, you know, where you there's plenty of cards that will do the same thing, sort of thing. I don't even know why I said that twice. <laughs> Regardless, uh, so uh, I find this character the weakest out of the nine, alongside Shaman. These, this is an awkward one, but I'll get on to Shaman in a second. Druid is a uh, game one attack this turn on one armor. One armor, uh, how armor works is it's like a shield from your life on top of your life, so that they have to go through your armor and then your health. It's like extra hit points, really, to be honest. Moving on, there's Rogue. Rogue work that they uh, equip a 1-2 dagger. That means 2 durability, 1 damage. Durability works on how many times you can play uh, use it before it, you, it gets destroyed. You can only use a weapon once per turn. And uh, it's okay. I mean, it's, it used to be a lot stronger, but it got nerfed. so Because it used to be, uh, if it was already a 1-2, you could then combo and then make it a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, 2-2. Two, two. So obviously did an extra damage, which is kind of nice. Shaman is summon a random totem. Each totem has different specs. It's a random one, so there's four. There's a 0-2 with spell power. Obviously, there's a load of different stuff to go over in the game, but I wanted to try and give you a brief overview the best way possible. Uh, then there's a totem what is just a simple 1-1. One, one. There's a totem what has 0-2 healing, like heal 1 damage from all characters. Because it works like uh, magic in terms of how the character, the uh, actual minions work in opposed to how Yu-Gi-Oh works. So uh, yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with magic, that's fine. I'm going to obviously play the game so you get a feel for it. And the last one is a 0-2 stel uh, taunt. sorry. And taunt works is you have to attack the minion before you're allowed to attack the life points. Because other cards, if they don't have taunt, you can just ignore them and keep going, just go for a direct attack. So imagine it like that, I suppose. Uh, Warrior, it's just simple, gain two armor. So it's just extra hit points, basically. And finally, we have Priest, who is restore two health. And that can be either to yourself or a minion. So that's kind of interesting. So uh, that gives you an idea. Obviously, they was all custom decks, so I've, I've put quite a lot of hours in. I should have really shown you, so I'll go back in a second, just to show you. Uh, I'm level 22 with Mage, which is... I, I've To give you an idea, I've played this game for about... I've had it for three days now. I've been playing it pretty crazily. Level 10 Warlock, level 10 Hunter, level 10 Paladin, level 10 Druid, level 10 Rogue, level 10 Shaman, level 10... Warrior and level 10, uh, level 11 priest, sorry. Now, if you're level 10, you unlock all the base stuff for the characters. So there, there is quite a nice progression going with the game. There's a lot of other stuff I want to cover. So it's going to be good. Uh, Shop-wise, just to give you an idea of how that works, is you can buy one pack for 100 gold. 
you can buy with real money and stuff, but the gold works quite nicely because you can earn a hundred gold per day by just playing. You'd have to get a hundred gold. You'd you would need to win thirty games, but to be honest, I play a lot of it and I, I can easily get through that. Uh, there's also like daily quests. I've already done them for today, but you get like quests like win two games with a warrior or something like that. So you, it gives you not only an incentive to try a different class. Also, a nice reward, you'll get like, say, 40 gold or something like that. So that's cool. Uh, we have the arena mode, which is like, you know how sneak peeks work. It's kind of like that, except it's more like draft format. It works very differently. You can either pay real money to play into this, or 150 gold. Now, I will be playing this later. It, it, I, I don't think it'll be this episode I'll be starting it. But next episode, definitely, if you want to see more of this. Now, I'm going to quickly play a game. Uh... Ranked. That's just to give you an idea of what my rank's at. I've currently got to rank 18. I haven't like paid to play this game yet. I um, I, I tend to leave it off for a bit with card games because I feel that I need to see how the progression works in terms of how do I need to pay to get into this game. Because sometimes I just feel like that's the whole point of the game: collect the cards. Because if I've already got them all, what's the, why am I playing? You know what I mean? That's a problem. You know, there is a competitive nature to games, but I feel that there needs to be a treadmill to keep playing. It's like, oh, I've got this new card. I can try this new card out. Rather than just having them all and going, whoa, look, I can play all the cards. You see what I mean? <laughs> Without sounding arrogant, you know, that's terrible of me. But that's just how I see it. So, rank 25 is where you start, and you try and work your way down to rank 1. And you need to win two games initially, no, three games initially to rank up. Then it's four games. And I imagine it will get a lot more as you go further up the ladder. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's kind of cool. And each time you'll get a new symbol every time you rank up. So not alongside it. I think it's really cool. I've been playing a lot of Mage in this. Because uh, <laughs> I suppose you can tell. But I'm going to just quickly play a game. I don't know if it's going to be a bit laggy. I haven't tried it recording. Hopefully it won't be though. It does take a while for it to find someone, because obviously it searches for them of about the same level as you, which is really nice. I like how that works. It isn't just random, oh, here's a noob, or here's a pro. You've got someone who's at your wavelength. Sometimes you'll be really OP, because you're playing a class what you're just beneficial to play. Because obviously there are classes where you're, you're just great, because you're a class what just counters them so perfectly. I mean, I find if I'm mage and I'm playing paladin, I'm going to do great. Now, a lot of this will mean nothing to you, as if you're a viewer, you've just seen this game. But as you, it'll go along, you'll see what I mean. So, it works at how mana works in magic. If you don't know how that works, that's fine, except without the need for land. So, uh, I'm just going to uh, drop that for now, because I... Because it's a, basically a way mulliganing. Mulliganing for you Yu-Gi-Oh players who don't know what it is. It's where you get to re-draw like draw cards. Except you can be selective of it. Now, I've only got one crystal. So I cannot play any of these cards currently. Because I need at least two crystals to play a card in my hand. Or my hero power. Now, every turn I will gain an extra crystal to use at my disposal. So I'm going to use this. Because it's going to allow me to take out that directly. Just to give you an idea how that works. Pretty simple. You start with 30 life. That's No matter what class you are, it's 30 life. Uh, and he's just decided to do some direct damage. Obviously, he might not have anything. It's really nice that they've put this hero power idea in. Because the reason I like it is because... It means that even if you have like no options in terms of cards, you've still got something you can do. And I think that's so good because it gives you some productivity no matter what. Obviously, you're drawing every turn, but say you play a one, you've got you've ended up with ten mana, which is the max, and you've drawn into a a one one uh, one mana card. You've got nine mana left. You know you feel like you've wasted a load. At least with a hero power, you feel like you've done a little more. If that makes any sense, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, that was a interesting uh, turn. I think I'm going to freeze his card because it stands a real potential chance of being dangerous. Freezing is basically not only you do damage, but freezing means that they cannot attack next turn, which is kind of cool. So, it gives you an idea. It's obviously, playing games always best. Now, at the, at the minute, I'm playing someone who's a little lower uh, rank than me. 
in terms of low, I mean in terms of it being I, I'm better off in my position. If he has a, a frost, oh, he has a cone of cold, so he's going to freeze me. So that's interesting. So it's going to be very relevant on what I play here. Now, this works out really nicely for me because he's going to have to do both attacks to beat it. However, I do feel that if he plays a spell here, he's going to go up to free attack and he could just take it out by pinging it. Pinging it basically just means using that power of one damage. Putting me down to free. He's got that free. He can take it out with just that one card. So it isn't very efficient. Whereas if I play this, it means that he would need to play a lot of spells to try and get over it. Maybe he'll use a frost bolt as well. That means he still used two for one. You know, I'm trying to encourage a two for one trade. So sort of obviously I'm in a better hand advantage. That's how this game works a lot. You've got to really sort of think about what is the most advantageous play for me. Obviously, like all card games, it, it, you've got to think what will the opponent play in correspondence to what I'm going to play. Now he's used a fireball. Now these are quite overpowered. Uh, something I should also go over is cards, how they work in terms of how many you're limited to. You'll have two of a card at the minute. There isn't like, they haven't said any, they haven't got a ban list yet, it's still in beta. Is it likely to be one? Probably. It, it's a card game, they tend to get them. <laughs> but who knows? So I, I, basically the way my deck works is it's very much on late game, it's all about I take a few hits early on, maybe. I've got that power, so, you know, weak, weak as stuff. It's not going to matter as much, because I'm going, by the end of the game, I've just got all this heavy taunt stuff, all this massive, destructive, you know, just annoyances at him. And he's just going to have to keep just whacking at him, and it's going to become a real annoyance for him. Now, I've got two choices. I can either play the Fairy Dragon, or I can uh, push for the trade. He's sort of forced to attack this now, really, or he's going to lose his card. So I've sort of forced the trade, if you get me. I mean, it's still inefficient to me, but it, a minute one equal card, so... I don't know, I mean, I, I'm quite happy with how this has got... It, well, he's frostbolted me, so that's interesting that he would do that. I wouldn't say that was necessarily a good idea, but I don't know. Now, I've got Fireball here, so I can sort of do what he did to me, which is nice. So I think I will. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that is uh, efficient. Because as well as that, I'm going to be able to play my uh, dragon here. This is a really interesting card. It's the only card in the game which I'm aware of, which cannot be targeted. Which is kind of an interesting idea. I like it. I think it's a really good effect. I would like to see them bring out... You know, I think it, it's kind of really strong in terms of that ability but it's not affected by random stuff so it can still get hit by random stuff so that's nice as you know obviously if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh you'll -Oh, know how that works uh, whew. so we've got quite a few options there I'm thinking that we don't need to use a Paul on mana I think that's another good thing about this game you've got to know what is conservative you've got to have this idea of no, I'm not going to throw everything out now, because it wouldn't benefit me. I mean, I thought, if I keep over an archer, he may play a card that says has two health, so I can hit for one, hit for one. Now, obviously, it's it's an unlikely circle, but it might happen. Now, he could have any number of stuff here, so I'm going to try and whittle it down and see what he might have. So I'll start with a fireball. So it isn't... Secrets work interesting, like a trap, but not really. It could be a counter spell. Okay, so it's not a counter spell. Is it a... Mirror Entity? Obviously, I know what all these cards are. But now I know it's a Vaporize, so I'm just going to ignore that. He can ping me thinking about that. That's annoying. But yeah, basically you can go through this system of events to determine what they're playing as a secret. You've got to obviously know what all the secrets are, but regardless. Uh, that's annoying. And he's played a very annoying card as well. But I know just how to deal with that. So I'll start by getting my, uh, hmm. What is that then? Hmm, I'm trying to think of what it could be. 
Huh. I kind of have to do that, unfortunately. We'll hit him for one. See what his response is. I'm finding this really interesting as a game because it's got so much potential and it's only in beta. I feel that if they continue to have it at this high standard, we could do a lot with the game. Now, this is a perfect way of using Polymorph. So you see how I thought about using it back then, but then realised that, you know, I could get a lot more value out of it. What? Okay, that was really beneficial to him. So I'm going to need to get some draw power here. We'll take the Divine Shield off. That's like a free hit, basically. And I think that that one card has actually put him in position here. Because I kind of can't deal with this card at the minute. And that card's going to make things worse, because he's going to get draw power. Now, I think draw power is a really important aspect in this game. And he's definitely took in the lead. So it looks like uh, not great, you However, saying that, I can make a very crafty move here, which is this. I'm going to get him a draw, because obviously it did some more damage. Regardless, I... Oh, and I've accident... Ah, oh, I misclicked. That's terrible of me. However, you'll see how quickly he's able to take advantage of that one mistake. There's a number of things his deck can do from that, I'd imagine. Mage seems to be the powerful class out of a lot of the minute, though. So he's definitely got something planned. So he does another six, and he probably has a Frostbolt to finish me off. So I, I realise that I've not been very friendly in terms of showing you what the game has to offer. So I think to uh, finish off today's sort of video, uh, we will sort of look at how deck building works. I think the best way we can do that is show you Arena, which is a really cool idea. So Arena works that you get to basically build a deck from scratch, and you can't really put things in beforehand. So let's go for that. So we're going to use gold. Uh, so you get three classes to pick from. Which one would you prefer? I'm going to pick Mage. I love Mage. I think it's great. I think it's probably the easiest to play as well. And we're just going to go for some cards. I'm going to pick Vaporize here because it's a really nice card, as you see. People will be able to know how to play rounds to cards, but I think I'm going to go for a very AoE hitting deck with some cards what sort of just block him off for a while. That's the way I think I'm going to play it. Lepinome I really like. I think it's a really nice card. So we're going to go for Dark Iron Dwarf. I like that. Uh... Divine Shield. So I'm just giving you a flavour of what cards are, just to uh, make things a bit more interesting for you. I'm going to go for quite a charge heavy, but I don't think so actually. I, I quite like all these three choices. But I think I like charge a lot, even if it is weak. Uh, Polymorph, definitely. Uh, Fairy Dragon, I love it. I think it's a great card. Uh, every time Sunwalker. I think Sunwalker's great. You could play Questing Adventure, but I feel it's just... Not that great. I think people overhype it a lot for when you're actually playing it in reality. It's not that great. I like quite heavy cards, so I'm going to pick a uh, Lord of the Arena. Uh, here we have an interesting choice. We can either go for Taunt, a mini hitter, or something that can do some quite annoying things. I quite like Water Elemental, and it's quite nice uh, mana friendly as well. Uh, normally I would play this, to be honest. I think it's a great card. I mean, it's 5-4 Taunt. I mean, I, I think it's quite good. I think people underestimate it. Uh, because I'm playing, uh, Mage, these two both benefit me. Because Enrage, when they're damaged, it gains an effect. I mean, I don't know why this isn't called Enrage. Regardless, though, what it means is that I can either use this and have a 2-star potential 5 Two. Well, it would have to get hit, so it's at least a 5-2 when that happens. Or I can go for a late-game hitter. Now, I think in this position, I would like a Imani Berserker, because I like that mini hit early on. 
Uh, I haven't seen two... Have I got any secrets yet? I don't think I have. Oh, I have. I've got one. I've got Vaporize. I can either go for a 1-2, what becomes a 2-3, if I had that secret. Or... F Larkness, what becomes a 5-5 five, five, now. 4 star, 3-3. Three, three. It's kinda... You see, I've got cards that do a lot better at that point, so I think I'm going to go for a low star play. Just to try and help that curve out. At this point, I'm definitely going to pick a Gorobashi Berserker, because it's going to help a lot. Uh, Raging Worgen, overpowered, definitely. You've got to think about what you're using, and how that can benefit you. Now, Mana Worm's great, but I feel Frostbolt's better in this position. Uh, next card, we have quite an interesting hit here. We can either swap that, I think that's a really cool card, but I think it's kind of nifty. Demolisher, I really like the idea of Demolisher, because it's kind of a, it is a bit RNG, but it's really consistent. I think a 2-2, two -two, that's quite amazing. I mean, the problem with Ancient Watch, why I wouldn't play it, is because it's so powerful, but it can't do anything. It can't attack. No one's going to attack it because it's not got Taunt. So unless you're playing a deck like, say, Druid, where they can make things Taunt, it's kind of useless. So I'm going to go for Pint Size Summoner, because the two, it's kind of great, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, out of these three, I think Stormwind is great. 2-5. Five. 5 is just such an awkward number, I find. In terms of there's not a great deal of stuff they can use against it. Now, I've loved Flesh Eating Ghoul quite a lot, but in this deck, do I run a lot of creatures? Lower level, at least. Uh, I use a few. I, I am, I'm kind of creature heavy, but... I kind of like that late game play. You know what, I will, because I think it's quite a nice bullet magnet as well. Uh, Fireball, definitely. That's a good pick as well. But I think we have a lot of low level plays. We can go for something a bit heavier. Uh, then three, I feel these two's weak, unless you're running Murlocs, and that's great. So we're going to have that as the obvious pick. Here's an interesting pick, because we use, we had that Secret Keeper. I think we're going to take that Secret. I have used this in my normal deck, but then again, I haven't got much choice in that matter. This is an interesting pick, I've got to say. So I'm trying to give you, 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 you might have different picks, obviously, throughout this, but I've just tried to give you an idea of deck building. And I think the uh, thing's giving me the finger, actually. I didn't even mean that. It's dreadful. <laughs> Hearthstone's giving me the finger, guys. Great. <laughs> I think we'll take that second Frostbolt. It's between these two, I think, but... I don't know. What's my spell count at? It's quite heavy, isn't it? I'm trying to think if that would bear some thought into the game. Uh, it is free too. It is quite heavy for a two star. The only thing what I have what matches it's that. So I could play it. However, I just love Frostbolt, so I think I'm taking that. Uh, I'm taking a second Fairy Dragon because I, I just love it. Uh, Dark Iron Dwarf or Taunt. It's kind of the awkward decision. But I kind of like Dark, Dark Iron Dwarf. I find it's a great card, so I'm going to go with Dark Iron Dwarf. Second Fireball, all the way. And our final card. These two, it's between them two, obviously. I think I'm going to take the draw power because I need it. I don't think I have any draw power currently. Let's have a little rattle through the deck. Uh, it doesn't seem so, does it? So I think we're definitely taking that draw power. So yeah, we're going to take this deck, which I'm going to call the Giving Me Halfstone's Giving Me the Finger deck. I think we're going to call that. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how the deck is, and I want to just talk through some of these cards and why I chose them and how I think this deck's going to run. So I've got quite a limited amount of ones because I feel that because I'm playing Mage. They don't mind. They they can take that early summon because if you see a lot of these, they tend to have one health, and people tend to pick one health a lot. I mean, at most they might have three, but one health is generally what they go for, and he, they, I can just ping it next turn with the power. Uh, for twos, we've got quite a lot of twos. I wouldn't have personally gone for that, but it was best decision at the time. And it is going to allow me a few, like, fours and fives, what were better choices in my opinion. 
if you have a look further down, you know, it just gives these higher sort of sort of killer cards to be able to get them out earlier. And that's what this deck lacks in. If they have an early charge, they can really ram raid me. Uh, secret keepers I've gone over. I think I have got a couple secrets in here. You know, I've got the uh, mirror entity and the vaporize, which are both quite early on. And it's a 1-2, so it can take a little bit of a hit from, say, a ping. I use two Frostbolts. I find Frostbolt a great card. It can either hit a minion or, you know, the hero itself. And it freezes. So I think it's either, it's normally used as just a takeout. Because at it, two, it, two mana, they're not likely to have anything with more. And late game, it still works great because there's a lot you can do with that. I mean, with ping, that's four damage. There's a lot of cards you can take out what has four damage. Amani Berserk, it's kind of a quick rush down early on. I mean, a 5-2 is quite hard to take down. I mean, you won't be able to use a ping that turn, but going to turn 3, you, you've got that 5-2. It's kind of awkward, or if they hit into it, it's not likely that they're going to have a free damage card, and if they have, you know, they've probably wasted a, a, a card or two to do that. So that's something to keep in mind. I use two Fairy Dragons. I think these are so good, just what they do. I think it's amazing. It's kind of really hard to take it out as well. Pint sizes I've gone over. Cone of Cold. Uh, in normal circumstances, I'm not really a fan of it. But I took one because I thought it would be good in the circumstances I was given in terms of them cards. Mirror Entity Vaporizes to just uh, just to save me a few chances. I mean, it saved that guy last game, as you saw with the say that. Demolish, it's a bit on cheap, but it's very good. I mean, four damage, it's, yeah, four health even, it's pretty safe. And uh, that 2 damage is kind of risky, obviously, because it could do 2 damage to one of your enemies. But, well, one of your... Oh, not to my enemies, what am I saying? Not even to my character, it is one of the enemies. But I feel that at that point in the game, you can ping them as well. So you, you're kind of at an advantage. Especially in Ghoul, I've always seen as a bullet magnet, and it kind of takes out a couple cards. I tend to find all they've gone for some heavy RNG card, uh, AoE card even to uh, take it out. Raging Worgen, like I've said, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Crusader, Wolf Rider, these cards are pretty safe to uh, say. One's like a heavy hitter, one's like a sort of drawback. And then we have two Fireballs. These are powerful. You can just do six damage to them if you wanted to. Polymorph, I'm a great fan of Polymorph. Two Dark Irons. Now, normally in a deck with Mage, I wouldn't use them because obviously you're not creature heavy, but this deck it's kind of creature heavy, I've got to be honest. So in this circumstance, it works quite well. Storming Knight, I feel 5 health is quite good for a 4. As well as it having charge means you can go for a hit straight off the bat. And uh, Water Elemental, I feel that freeze is really good. Especially because you can direct hit them. And if they have a weapon, which I haven't been able to go over in this game. Uh, this sort of episode. We might be able to next turn. Uh, it has a lot of benefits. Azor Drake draw power. Spell damage one means it does one more damage. It's supposed to do one more damage than normal. Uh, a bit of taunt. Uh, this card's really nice because you can do damage to it with the hero power to make it even powerful. Uh, Lord of Urina, a taunt, and some walker, which is another taunt. So you get the idea of how the deck will work. Uh, I suppose this is it for now. This is half stone, half hour because it, it takes about half an hour to do. That's how long I want these to be. So you see the pun there, get it? <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a comment below telling me how far you think this arena will go. And other than that, thanks for watching and good bye.